Nor can you stop sharing. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I thought you were different. 
different? You are the only man here who has asked me what I have to say. Yes, you humiliate and belittle me just because you have a print doesn't mean you should be one. <laughs> I bet I'm the first person ever telling you you're wrong. That's not true. Name one person who has. I have nothing to prove to someone like you. All right. Why did you burn down the convent? Why are you in this cabin? I asked you first. Love. 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 What was his name? Silver. I guess I come to the tavern for the same reason as you do. Mm -hmm. We both love someone we can't be with. Now, I'm not as brave as you, though. You can put it that way. You can do whatever you want, whenever you want. It's not glamorous if you make it out for you. You burnt down the coffin for your lover. That is incredible. Are you jealous of me? No. <laughs> You're amazing. You're a hero. Why are you laughing? I am. <laughs> now you're the one humiliating me. You think you're the first person to tell me that? I don't know why you see me like that. I don't know how this ends up.
And now the hand that once held a sword was now holding a wedding ring. For three months I tried to be a wife. And one day I looked into the mirror and the fire that I always had been told, told I had was gone. So I made a promise to myself. I promise to always live so that when I look in the mirror, I see the fire in my eyes. And I ran away. And I never saw my husband or my father again. But if you didn't kill Dame Ahan, who did? Nobody did. He had a heart attack shortly after I ran away. I don't, I don't know why people thought I killed him. He wasn't a horrible man. But still, you ran away from him. Just because he was an, just because he wasn't an awful person doesn't mean that I would be happy to be alive. So what happened next? Once I started running, I never stopped. And I ran and I ran until I found myself in the Paris Opera. And coincidentally, it was the day they were having auditions. You've been a sword fighter your entire life. And now suddenly you're an opera singer? Do I have to be only one of those things? <laughs> <laughs> you need to open your mind, your highness. Women can be many things at once. A sword fighter, a wife, a lover. A lover. I have a hard time imagining you being the romantic type. I can be. Is there someone special? After I was hired at the Paris Opera, I spent my time fraternizing with the other company members and going to balls and socials. I filled my time spending time with people exclusively that my father would disapprove of. Hey, Julie, I'm going to the masquerade tonight. Oh, I don't know. I'm still recovering from last night. We're all going to be there. You have to come. There's going to be drinks. Boys. Ooh. Agents to network. Oh, boys. And boys. Well, little did I know, I was attending the biggest party of the year, and I had no idea the trouble I was going to end up in. The masquerade. Party members enter, making a ruckus. Julie spots Sylvie across the ballroom. They make eye contact. Who is that? Oh, that? That's Sylvie Moreau of the Toulon Road. Sylvie Moreau? Oh, her father owns all of the tobacco in France. The dancing continues. In the chaos of the party, Julie and Sylvie's eyes meet. They share a dance. Time seems to stand still. Who are you? I'm just the person who's only desired to dance with the prettiest girl here. But how would you know if I'm the prettiest girl here if I have a mask? <laughs> I don't need you to take that mask off for me to know how beautiful you are. I'm Julie. Sylvie Moreau. I know who you are. Suddenly, the girl with the fire in her eyes has met a girl with fire for a man. Julie and Sylvie continue to dance, ignoring everyone around them. They kiss. Time freezes. Then, chaos. People run to separate them. Julie, what are you doing? I, I, I um, uh, you, you cannot do that. Sylvie, what is wrong with you? I, 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 Who are you? Nobody. It is improper for me to kiss another gentleman's date at a party. I apologize. I, I didn't know that the lady was already taken for. Please just leave it. Gabriel turns to leave with Sylvie. Gabriel grabs Sylvie's arm roughly. And when you tire of the nincompoop, Captain I will leave a spot for my best friend. I challenge you, you scoundrel. You need to learn to hold your tongue. Gabriel, please. Quiet, Sylvie. I think that a woman of your position should know when to keep silent. I accept your challenge. And when you lose, I will win the mademoiselle. Julie kisses Sylvie's hand. The scene transitions from the masquerade to the duel, a fight sequence between Julie and Gabriel should follow. Eventually, Julie should hit Gabriel with a final blow, throwing him to the ground. During the fight, something should happen to the crowd realize that Julie is a woman. There should be audible and visible shock to the crowd. A crowd should cover Gabriel and attempt to move, and Julie should take this opportunity to run. <laughs> <laughs> After that, I went to court, but His Majesty the King thought that I was such an accomplished singer that he let me go. That's when I first heard about you. A what was the trial? Yeah, it wasn't that interesting. But what happened to the man you dueled? Oh, nothing. <laughs> you killed him. 
mean, everybody already thought I killed my husband, so what does it matter if I killed this fool? Anyways, after the incident at the masquerade, Toby's father sent him to a convent, and I was determined to rescue her. Sit the convent. Sylvie is asleep in her bed, a tapping on the stained glass window. She goes to the window and opens it. Julie appears suddenly in the window. Julie, Sylvie, Amy, what are you doing here? I'm coming to get you. Yes, me? I mean, I have two horses right outside and a map with the path of the Ari's mark. The Ari's? We need to get past. Why is she doing so dingy? I mean, those nuns haven't been mistreating you, have they? I swear to God, they even laid a hand on you. I was doing I'm sorry. I'm just overwhelmed by seeing you after all this time. Darling, I appreciate you telling me that I really, really do. What are you trying to say, Sylvie? You know how much I care for you. I, I don't think I could be loved until I met you. And that is why this is the most difficult thing I have ever had to do in my life. What's wrong? You don't really expect me to just run away with you on a whim. I wasn't aware that being in love is a whim. You, you, you are in love with me, aren't you? Julie, my father said I could go home if I married. Don't be. Don't. I know what you're going to say, but please, darling, let's be realistic. You are living in some sort of fantasy where we could run away and all could be well. Julie, use that stubborn head of yours and wake up and realize that we can't be together anymore. I've spent my entire life telling everybody else to fight to fight for what they want and what they love in you, but my rose, in you, I see that same spirit that people in me have tried to kill, that same spirit that so many women have been told to murder. You could have that what you want, and yet you are so concerned with what everybody else thinks that you're willing to live your life catering to the desires of a man. Would being bound to a woman be any different? Truly, you don't listen to anybody who doesn't tell you what you want to hear. Am I supposed to run off to you, with you and you won't even listen to me? At least I could be bound to a man and have a stable life. But you wouldn't have love. I love you. Sylvie, I love you and you love me. That should be enough. I do love you, too. I love you with all my heart, but you cannot live with love alone. Could it? I mean, I would spend the rest of my life breaking my back to provide for you, and after we die, I promise I'd find you in our next lifetime and fall in love with you again and again and make you the happiest woman on this earth, and I will do that in every life we are born into. Just to prove to you that I am enough, that we are enough. Watch the snow fall, breathe it in long, we don't have to run and hide. No sweet the ashes, don't you worry, Lord now please say by my